My name is Mira Nair. It was a Monday morning, and every seat was taken. I felt everyone's eyes on me. Here was a scared woman in wet pajamas, barefoot, carrying a small bag in her hand. Where could she be going? I knew I had to get off at 42nd Street, so I waited for the numbers four and two to blink on on the screen above the driver's head. My daughter and son, I can't tell you how long that ride felt. Babita stopped and looked up at the women in the room. Ten were women from Nepal, just like her. Then there was Muna, the interpreter, and one creative writing professor from NYU, me. All of us were crying. We were at a creative writing workshop I was running at Adhikar, a nonprofit that served domestic workers from Nepal. Babita continued. When 42nd Street finally arrived, I got off the bus and tried to find a cab. At the taxi stand, the line was long and I saw police standing around. I got scared. Maybe they were looking for me. I decided to walk away from the stand. Barefoot, I walked eight or nine blocks. On the sides of the street, I saw a dozen homeless people sleeping on the ground. I started panicking. What if I became one of those people on the side of the road? I worried I would never see you two kids again. Babita stopped. She was clearly fighting tears. She was 39 and had never confessed her story to anyone in her family. The domestic workers in the room nodded in sympathy. They all had similar stories. Nita was a nanny in Park Slope. Padma looked after a rich old lady on the Upper West Side who occasionally threw her plate in frustration. Debu had her hand crushed in an industrial blender at a restaurant and had lost her job when she asked for compensation. When I heard these devastating, hopeful, incredible stories the first time, this was what was going through my head. How exactly am I supposed to make anyone care? How do I make Babita make readers and listeners care? How on earth do you take someone who is just another underpaid, undocumented, anonymous immigrant who can barely speak English, just trying to get by in this insane city? How does she make you or any other New Yorker sit up and listen? How does she become the storyteller of her own story and stand up at, say, the glamorous Rubin Museum and get a room full of people to sit up and actually listen? Like me, the women had doubts. I have not written a thing since high school. I don't know how to write. I can't write English. No one ever asked me to write anything about my life. They didn't think of themselves as storytellers. We said, if you can talk, you can write. It's as simple as that. Talk to each other. Tell your story. So they talked out loud in Nepali and Hindi and English. And you know, we South Asians, we love to talk. Uh, we taught them to listen to themselves. I used methods from oral history. Now, write down what you just said, we said. And they did. Then we said, describe the scene. What were you wearing? What did the room smell like? How did the floor of the kitchen look after the industrial blender crushed your hand? Can you add that to what you just wrote? We taught all those tried and tested methods of creative writing, which I do here every day at Gallatin. The telling detail, the sensory specificity, the narrative arc. We told them, just think of this, this way. Just pretend you're writing a letter home. That's what we call the project, a letter home. But we said, this is not the letter you normally write. The everything is fine letter. The with God's grace and your blessing, mother, I'm doing very well here letter. How about actually telling your family the truth? Tell them about that guy who you fell in love with, the guy you met at the audio store, who even wanted to bring your kids over from Nepal, the guy you trusted with $10,000 you had saved up, who then vanished. Would you tell them you ran away from your abusive employer in New Jersey and ended up in New York with $5 in your pocket like Babita did? Like always, on the morning of the 20th, I woke up at 5.30 a.m. 
The youngest child in the family used to sleep with me, so I took my time gently getting out of bed. I didn't change out of my pajamas because I was afraid I would wake the sun up. What if he ruins my plan? I thought as I walked to the bathroom. I let the water run. I grabbed my small luggage and walked out of the main door. I wouldn't leave from the main entrance, but from behind where there was a small park. When I got to the park, the sprinklers came on. I was wearing a pair of flimsy flip-flops and in the water, my clothes got wet and one of the flip-flops slipped off my feet as I hurried to cross the park. I wanted to run back and get my sandal, but I was afraid. So I shook my second flip-flop off my foot and ran towards the bus stop. Babita hasn't seen her children in 10 years. She can't go back. She sends money to her children, talks to them on Google Hangout. In the end though, she had her story told. She now says she wants to write a book about her experiences. The women had five weeks of two-hour workshops, 10 hours in all to learn how to tell their stories in their own voices. At the end of the workshop, the women had 20 letters in English and Nepali with their words that were framed and hung for readers. The writers performed at the Rubin Museum, the Asian American Writers Workshop, the Queen's Council of the Arts, all big cultural institutions in New York City. They told their stories. Hundreds of people came to hear them. And I tell you, every time there wasn't a dry eye in the house. They also went to wine and cheese receptions and you know, did the whole literary evening thing. <laughs> Personally, I thought storytelling was a means to make sense of their own stories that this was how they could own their stories. But as Neeta said afterwards, I wanted to tell my story for our sisters. Then maybe our employers will see us differently, treat others like us better. I'm a writer, a teacher, a community activist, but I'm sharing this with you today for a reason. I'm trying to set up workshops like these in communities all across the city so more people can tell their stories because there are a lot of stories out there waiting. Thank you.